Hello, my soccer universe. Welcome to the Europa League quarterfinals review. Well, was not exactly my evening yesterday, I have to say. Uh, we had only one really interesting uh, game. Uh, that was I was I was hoping for two. I know that uh, others were a little a bit more already out of balance, but yeah. Uh, Wearing Arsenal, uh, it was impressive what they showed for a while, but it also killed a little bit of joy of the evening. Uh, but before we get to the Europa League, and I know I should only do Europa League, but since yesterday's uh, video, I didn't have the dates for the Champions League semifinals. Here they are. We start first on Tuesday with Real Madrid, Chelsea, then PSG, Man City, and then uh, it's reverse uh, Man City, PSG, and Chelsea, Real Madrid. Off to the Europa League we go. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think it was when we made, made when the draw was made. We already knew that uh, the one really standout tie was Roma against Ajax or Ajax Roma, however you wanna uh, deal with it. And this was the one where the most of the um, excitement came from. Also, uh, this over both legs, although the first game in Amsterdam was definitely the better one. Yesterday, um, yeah, uh, Ajax tried and tried and tried, but just could not break through and Roma uh, channeled in Italians, which I found kind of disappointing. Um, I was also, as I said, Arsenal very impressive, but it was a little bit disappointing that Slavia cannot really uh, give them a better game. Uh, Villarreal, Zagreb, I think Villarreal also got it done by halftime. Yes, we know that Spurs came back against Ajax uh, with a 3 0 overall deficit, similar to the situation. And yes, there were the chances, but Zagreb overall, no. And what that means is that for the semi finalists, we have uh, a top, top team from England, and then we have some mid-table, uh, you know, definitely out of the Champions League uh, slots, uh, teams making up the numbers, which of course means that United are prohibitive favorites. But one by one, let's uh, look into the games. As I said, the Roma Ajax, um, I was seriously considering only watching that one. Uh, in, in the end, so I decided on the goal zone and I, I, maybe it was the wrong choice because uh, I saw a lot of that robot there as well. But I, I, this Arsenal Slavia kept me a little bit, uh, it piqued my interest and yeah, so maybe, maybe I made the wrong choice there. In any case, uh, I think Roma had a pretty good chance at the very, very, very beginning. Then Ajax was trying to break Roma down. Um, but in in a way not very effective. All Roma had to do is is to channel their Italians in the Italian Italian <laughs> uh, and defend deep, which is not like Roma. And uh, the only dangerous situations came when, for instance, Paul Lopez played out a bad ball um, that was in, in, in intercepted. But what uh, Ajax really could do is they got themselves into position to make maybe one final pass or maybe take a shot, but that's where they then failed. And that's not, never a good, good sign. Tadic, I think, had the best chance, but he basically shot it right at uh, Paolo Lopez. So you're not going to get anything from, from there. And in the second half, um, Broby came on and had an immediate impact by scoring a goal. And then uh, he also was uh, involved into Ventadic in the 50 seconds and got the 2-0 for Ajax. And at that point, you really thought that the game could break. However, there was a foul of Talia Fico or Mkhitaryan on there, which uh, at the first, when I saw it in game, I thought, nah, th this should have been good. But when you when, when, when see on the, uh, Talia Fico really hits him on the shin, not uh, on purpose, but he meant to hit there. And so, yeah, uh, the goal is taken off and that in many ways took the wins out of the sails for Ajax because uh, from what I could see then thereafter, it was so many times that they were in good positions uh, and then just either hasty or not with a lot of vision. The only one who has vision is Tadic and even he could not deliver. And Tadic to me is a little bit, um, how, how to say, the tragic figure of, of, of the tie because always around the 10, 10, 10 minutes in, in the second half in both ties, there was a big scene where he in the end did not score. The, in the first leg, it was the penalty, which would have made it 2-0. And if this would have stood, I think Ajax goes through. 
And here the goal was disallowed. Um, and then Calafiori runs and uh, the Ajax uh, <laughs> defender basically, basically falls over. Uh, then the crossing gets deflected right in, in, into Jaco. And from that uh, kind, of, kind of distance with that kind of ball, Jaco is not going to miss. And as I said, Ajax could not, could not break down Roma. And Roma goes through. Um, I, as I said, in the competition, the, uh, those are my two favorite teams in there. Um, I thought I have no favorite. I found myself rooting a little bit more for Ajax. But, you know, uh, I thought that Ajax probably on balance is the better team, probably would have deserved to go through. But then I think about uh, Serie A and Milan, although Roma is not that much of a threat at the moment, maybe it's not so bad that Roma uh, still has the hard pro program and there's one less team to worry about in the Champions League fight for Milan. Yeah. I think Roma went through a little bit lucky, but at least we got one really great game and one exciting game. This game, yes, yes a little bit then descended into madness and ugliness also. So, um, yeah, it was not the great game. Uh, whatever chances Granada thought they have against United were done after six minutes when Cavani scored after Popper cross and then United saw it out. Uh, when you saw the game, and I'm, I'm only saying it's just, just to say some, something. I always thought that, yeah, uh, United hung, hung back and Granada tried to do a little bit. Uh, but, you know, then uh, <laughs> they scored a second goal through an own, own goal from Baia Yecho. There is not much more to say about, about that United cruising through this uh, tie. As I said, I really, after what Slavia showed in London, I really thought that Arsenal will have trouble, um, but within 10 minutes, they completely decided at uh, the tie. Uh, first, a Smith Rowe goal is disallowed. Then Pepe, after a nice Smith Rowe pass, uh, can ward off everyone and from uh, runs into the box and from short, short distance, pull, 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 the internet. Uh, three minutes later, penalty is given, it's 2 is two nil, and then Saka, 20, 24th, another three minutes later. Makes it 3 nil, and that settled the game. I think from that moment on, yes, you may be... I think for, for that moment, if you are a Slavia fan, you were hoping maybe we can score a goal, maybe we can get something, I don't know. There was none, 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 nothing. In fact, like I said, it's a fourth. To me, more or less, the, and it's not, not on the negative side, exciting, but you know, uh, uh, surprising news was that Aubameyang was diagnosed with malaria. Doesn't sound fun. And then, Villarreal Zagreb, it was almost similar to the uh, Arsenal game. Villarreal uh, pressed forward. Uh, I think Chukchuk from a very short distance hit the post. Um, and then uh, Chukwueze also, I mean, uh, it was a Gerard Moreno pass to Chuk Chukwueze where you thought that Chukwueze is potentially offside, but he was just not. Uh, puts it over to Paco Alcasta and it's 1-0 for Villarreal, who really uh, were all dominant in the first half. Uh, Gerard Moreno uh, slots it at home for, to make it 2-0 just, just before the half. Zagreb then, I mean, Villarreal more or less then said, okay, that's done, we just need to get, get home. Zagreb had chances, they get a goal by Orsic, who probably could, could, could scored early, early as well. There was a huge chance also that uh, Ruli uh, just saved with his foot. So, I mean, if Zagreb were clinically, maybe they could have pulled it, but it was honestly never really in, in, the, in the cards. And so we have the following semifinals. We have a semifinal that I'm actually excited about. Uh, that's Villarreal against Arsenal in the sense that this is the Union Emery derby and I would say that Arsenal, I mean, you know, from a gut feeling, we'll look at the pro probably and just, just say gut feeling is that Arsenal are, of course, the favourites. However, I think that Union Emery has a decent squad that just makes too many draws in La Liga. I think they if they would be a little bit more, more clean, they definitely could challenge for a Champions League spot. So um, I think it's, it's more f finely balanced. And uh, let's see whether who gets one over the other, uh, whether it will be in Emory or Arsenal or, or the other way around. Um, so very, uh, I think this is an in, 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 in interesting one. Bigger names are definitely United and Roma. However, I don't see Roma challenging United in any, any way. But then I, I didn't see Roma challenging Ajax, to be honest, as well. So uh, there you go. And United has this semi-final curse uh, under Ole. So, um, yeah. 
but we are really grabbing on, on the, 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 the straws or whatever. Uh, it is, I, from all the teams united, they're not playing the most exciting uh, way. However, uh, they really only got challenged by Milan so far, and uh, that in the, in the end was then kind of conquerance council because Milan doesn't have a striker. I don't think that Roma is not. Roma gave Milan a good game in in control, but uh, the current Roma, although exciting to watch in uh, Serie A at times, they have not in any case the quality that Milan, for instance, has, uh, and, and uh, most of the other Serie A teams on top have. So yeah, uh, that's where we are with uh, Ro uh, Roma and just looking at the squad depth of United. They are uh, big fav big favorites there. Of course, I will root for my Roma uh, there, uh, but I don't see it much happening. I actually see an English final uh, happening. And let's see, at the chances, uh, we have United. 44% of winning the Euro Europa League. This is almost as good as a single game in two games. So uh, that tells you everything. 73% to make make to the final. As I said, Arsenal, Villarreal, a little bit more finally balanced. 54-46. But I remember the last time I thought that a uh, Spanish team could uh, get uh, oust Arsenal. That was when Arsenal made it to Europa League final two, year, two years ago when they played against Valencia. And there was not much trouble there, to, to, to be honest. So, um, realistically... It's an English final. Would I want to see that? No, absolutely not. Uh, I would like to at least see one of the other, one other uh, 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 team in there. Maybe an Arsenal Roma final. Uh, probably my personal uh, fav favorite, although Villarreal Roma. But it will be United Arsenal. That's a uh, house certain name. When will those semifinals be played? Well, first United has to play at home to Roma. And if you, there is a little bit of history between those two, uh, given, the, you know, 7-1 in 2007 and blah, blah, blah. And as I said, Villarreal Arsenal, uh, first leg is in uh, Villarreal. So, yeah, I, I have a gut feeling that Arsenal will get the win there and we don't have much to play for in the second legs, which will be just played a um, week later. So, yeah. As you can see, I'm not. I'm the whole season. I was really high on, on the Euro Europa League. I'm losing a little bit of interest because it's pretty clear cut. I think that United will lift this trophy. If there's an upset, I might re re reconsider. And I'm wondering about the circling rule that I showed you with the uh, Euro uh, Champions League uh, a little bit ago. Uh, the most circular crest here is Villarreal. Maybe. Just maybe. In any case, let me know what you thought about uh, yeah, yes, yes games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.